All right, all right. Thank you for being here. Appreciate everyone attending. Uh, you know, these are for you. These are open Q and A so that you can ask whatever you want. Um, I don't want to have to lead these. I don't want to tell you what I think is important. I want you to tell me what you think is important on your setup um, or where you're struggling at in the program. So, again, I got a couple back, but um, hardest part of the program. You know, one person said that the hardest part is just where to start. You know, I, I agree with you. Um, it's always overwhelming getting a new system, especially one that's as robust as open to close. I think, you know, the starting point really is wrapping your head around that, you know, you only need to get the baseline in. You need to get your foundation in correctly, or it's going to be a long and painful road for you. So the people that want to start at triggers and smart blocks, probably not the right place to start unless you're really, really advanced and you're coming from a really, really advanced system. Um, you want to get that foundation in, you want to get your fields in, your uh, contact roles, file roles, um, tasks, and emails, and just work the way that you're working now in our system. Get used to the navigation. And then as you get more comfortable with everything, then you can start adding task pipeline. Then you can start adding smart blocks. Then you can start adding, um, how do I turn this task into a trigger? So really getting that baseline foundation in and really just don't, don't beat yourself up that you're not going to get this thing to where you need it in a week. It's just not going to happen. You're going to get that foundation in, you're going to work with it a little bit, and then you're going to start adding key pieces in the future so that you can get better and get more efficiency out of the system. And that's the, that's the key. Um, we do have people that, you know, have saved thousands of hours already. We, one of our first users, um, he, his TC is getting done with a hundred and they usually have about a hundred and some you know, pendings at a time, they're getting done halfway through the day. So it is possible, you know, just keep plugging away, definitely lean on our onboarding team. Um, the other thing I will say for getting started on that comment is go to open to close, um, go to open to close, go to the learn tab, go to webinars, and then come down here and get involved in some of our product training. So uh, fields 101, um, emails, text, messaging, contacts, tasks and triggers, documents, settings and integrations, get, get involved in these webinars because they're going to guide you through some of those and they're going to tell you about each piece of that program so that you can learn best practices and get a better start um, as you continue to build the system. So, all right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Anna's awesome. Yeah, she is awesome. Uh, thanks, Todd. Um, okay, cool. So, um, uh, Todd said he's new to the program, but he'd be glad to give me a list in a, in a little while for sure. So if you guys are thinking of any high level stuff, like I don't, I don't want your suggestions about, I think this button should be blue. Like that doesn't excite me. We, we are trying to get to the next level of automation in this program. We want to take away everything that can be done by a computer so that you guys can spend more personal time with your clients and with high level tasks that need your attention. If the deal's falling apart, if, you know, um, you know, just whatever in your business that's a real, you know, one of those roadblocks that you can focus on. You don't have to spend so much time double and triple typing things and and doing all this minutia that that is involved in a transaction. So that's where we want to be. We'd love to hear your um, ideas. Obviously, we got the idea lab here. We are cleaning this up just so you know, it's going to be a new release on this where there's some comments. We can comment back to you, let you know where we're at with some of the development, um, things like that that are pretty exciting. So. All right, cool. Well, we have no questions. Um, anyone have any questions? Just tell me, tell me one thing that you're struggling with in the program. Um, just everyone on the here, just give me one thing you're struggling with in the program. And let me just kind of chat about those. You don't have to be specific. Let's just get into a topic. Um, and then I can at least have something that you want to hear about. Okay. I haven't opened a ticket for this yet, but I do have a problem with system setup. Um, the choice options won't allow decimal points along with other things. That means you can't do things like 2.5 bedrooms or 4.5 commission. Uh, interesting. Yeah, definitely a support ticket. Um, they're going to have to look into that for you. So I'm not going to address it here, but definitely open up a ticket on that and um, they, they can get that fixed. That seems like a pretty easy fix there, Todd. So, all right, cool. Well, I'm in a new account today, so I don't have, um, I'm going to have to lean on Hannah and Jana and some who else is on here um, to tell me what, um, what transactions I should be in and hopping around in, or if there's certain integrations that we want to look at in these, but um, I'm just not real familiar with this account. So, um, but we can get started with, um, let's just go to a property and let me just walk through some things until I see some questions pop up here.
All right. Oh, one of the things I just noticed that we opened up to the context tab, right? That was kind of weird. I, I don't have any of my properties opening up to the context tab, but this one does. So let me um, let me show you where that is. You can set this when you open a property to come to any of these tabs automatically. So if you come down here to, um, uh, where is it? Default and settings. And you scroll down, it's going to ask you which field section you want it to open. So if you have a bunch of field sections, you can open it to a certain one every single time. For me, I just have all my information mostly in the first tab. And then I have like some commission and listing stuff in other tabs. But, um, and then this one is a default communication tab. So if I want to open up this transaction right now, it's set to contacts. If I wanted to open it up to tasks every single time, all I have to do is choose tasks here. Now, and you can have this different for all your properties. One property, you may want to open up contacts first. Another property, you may want to open up documents. Another one, you want to have tasks. So you can set where this is opening up so you don't have to um, come into the transaction and then change to tasks every single time you come in. Just have it open up the tasks if that's what you want. Okay. Okay. Um, intake forms. Uh, form conditions... Uh, versus form triggers. Took me a while to really wrap my brain around. Yeah, that's that's a really good topic. And uh, talked about this a little last week, but I see a lot of new names on here. So let's um, let's go into that. Okay, so in the intake form, you have a bunch of different options, right? And uh, again, I'm not sure what's what in here. So we'll just try to go to a general one. Um, form conditions. Oh, good. <laughs> there's tons of them in here. Um, okay, so if there's an HOA, what do I want to happen, right? I think of the form conditions when you guys get in here as a form builder. So this is going to build the form while they're filling it out, okay? Form conditions is building the form as they're filling it out. Form triggers is what do I want to happen after the form is filled out, okay? So let's address the form conditions first. Form conditions, um, if I say yes to HOA, so I want a really short form, but if I say yes to HOA, now it's going to ask me, hey, how many um, HOA do how many days, you know, like, is it a 10 day, um, before the docs are due? Is it five days, is it two days, whatever. And this one's going to be required. You see that box is filled out. So this one's required. This field's also going to pop in under that question, but this one's not required. So you can, you can have differences there. Um, contact roles, maybe there's an HOA contact you wanted to put in here. So like, you know, HOA name, phone number, that kind of stuff for, for reaching out, you could require or just put it in there for them to see. Um, documents, maybe there's an HOA addendum that needs to go with it. So you could have an HOA addendum here that uh, gets filled out and that could be required or not required. And then uh, you have here, reach out to HOA rep for docs. Well, this is an instruction that pops up uh, when you start the transaction to remind you. And they can't start that transaction until they check these off. So in this case, I would disagree probably with this. Um, this is just a demo account, but I would actually probably have this as a task because I don't want to have to do this before I start the transaction, okay? So anything you want to remind them of before it becomes a transaction here, anything that you want them to do afterwards, I would definitely put like this into a HOA task template and then trigger that over in the form triggers, which we'll talk about next. Um, if there's an appraisal, what do I want to happen? I want appraisal the number of days until it's due. I want uh, maybe an appraiser contact. Maybe I want a some appraisal document that you fill out in your state. And then um, any instructions. So you can see as I'm filling out this form and I'm saying yes to certain things or or no or whatever, or whatever a choice field or whatever your, whatever your indicator is here. But in this case, it's yes a lot. So if I choose yes, it's going to ask more questions because I need more information. If it's septic, I need more information about the septic. If it's well, I need more information about the well. If they're going to do an inspection, I need more information about whether it was scheduled and things like that. Now, um, form triggers, this is a little bit more, I guess, magical is what I usually call it. And that's like, is a survey required? Yes. Well, if it is, then I want to add my two fields here for the survey, the survey fields. You could add a field section. You could add a template. So come down here, let's find some templates. Um, all the fields are typically first and then the templates are after that. So here's one. If HOA is yes, then I want the system to add my HOA condo documents. That's my document template. And I want it to add my HOA by buyer HOA task, which is a task template. This is gonna happen automatically when you submit this form. The system's smart enough to know, yes, there's an HOA. So now go ahead and add my HOA documents template and my task template. And and you already saw up here where we had the fields coming in for HOA as well. Um, that was up here somewhere. Anyway, you, you get the point. 
if HOA, oh, here it is. If H, oh no, it's home warranty. If HOA is yes, bring in my HOA field section. So now field section is coming in, task templates coming in, document templates coming in. You may want to have a, a certain date template come in. You may want to have a certain trigger template come in. So there's a lot of variety here. Um, so those are the two major differences. Think of form conditions as it's building the form as you're filling it out. Think of form triggers as something you want to happen after the agent fills out the form, the initial intake, or something that happens once the TC approves it and it becomes a transaction. So there's two levels of approvals. And let me go into one of these transactions and I'm just gonna, I don't know if this one has it. Yep. Okay, so in here, you can see what actually happened in those submissions. So this is the agent submission. This is the TC approval. Now in, in your company, you may have the TC doing the initial uh, submission as well. That's totally fine if you if you do it that way. A lot of people do it because agents make mistakes or they're just crybabies, you know, they don't wanna fill out a form or whatever. So um, the intake submission here is gonna tell you what happened. So this didn't come in, uh, these did. So see that's green, green, green check. So this this field came in, this field came in. Scroll down, this template came in, this template came in. Now, if you want to see why, you can open this options up and you can see that this is black or whatever color, grayish black. This color means that, yes, it's good, it, it went. But if you come up here to one that didn't go, you're going to see it didn't go because is there a referral fee wasn't equal to yes. If it's equal to yes, it's going to actually do this field section. But in this case, it was not equal to yes, so it didn't bring that in. So that's a, that's a good thing it didn't bring it in. So that red doesn't mean anything bad. It just means that it's doing what it was supposed to do. But we want to alert you just in case you're like, hey, why didn't my field section for referrals come in? Well, now you can come into this in the health bar, look under your intake submission or your intake approval and see exactly what happened and what triggered that to happen uh, during that intake form. So if you ever feel like something's off, come in here and check it. And then a lot of the times you just go back and you're like, oh, Crap, I put, if it's yes, I meant if it's no, just go ahead and change that condition so that it works right for the next time. So. All right. Um, thanks, Emily, for that question. That was a good question. Anyone else? Questions? Tell me what you're struggling with. Tell me something that was difficult for you to set up. Tell me something that you want to improve upon that you think you could be getting more efficiency out of. Like, what do you, um, you know, what's just okay in the program? Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Um, while you're doing that, I'm just going to talk about this transaction a little bit. So uh, just navigation wise, a lot of people, I would familiarize yourself. I'm, I'm talking to people that have been on the program for six to nine months, and they still don't know some of these options that are in here. So familiarize yourself with what this does, um, especially the default and settings, um, searching fields, like it's kind of a cool thing. And there's a shortcut for this, and I don't use the shortcut that much. I think it's actually, I'll just look. Uh, let's see. Come down, where's fields? I believe it's control G to search for fields on a property. Interesting, that's not in here. Can you make a note just to, we can update this? So yeah, more. definitely. Um, okay, control G, let me try it. Now, yeah. it actually shows up on if we do, do the drop down. Uh, it's not in that other list you're looking at, but if you do that drop down again, it'll show you right next to it. It's like uh, Control G or whatever. Oh, on the property itself? Yeah. So it's, I, we should probably get that added to that other drop down, but it's actually in the drop down itself. So um, mm. just not, it's, it's not in both spots. Sorry, Matthew, my phone was ringing. I don't know how to turn that off, but my phone was <laughs> here, so I couldn't hear you. But where where is that located at? So like go go to it like you're going to do it manually. And so it'll show here, but we yep. should probably put that also on that other drop down. So okay. The other thing I was going to point out is like if you clicked up here in your menu bar or something, um make sure that you click just in an open space before you do these shortcuts, because otherwise it's going to go with your Mac or your PC shortcuts. If you click into the open to close, um, if you click in here on like a blank spot, then you do control G. That, oh, that didn't work. Uh, what did I click here? Interesting. Uh, oh, maybe it's really control G. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I was hitting command G. So if you, um, if you hit control G, then this is going to pop up and I can search for a closing date without having to go through all of my fields. If it's one of those properties with tons of fields in there, you can just look at it here. You can actually open it up here. It's going to open up the same screen as if you would have found it over here to the left. 
and then you can do whatever you need to do. Um, uh, note, note if you don't see the field, um, it may be hidden. So uh, you kind of touched on a little bit, but the manage uh, field section. So if you try to do a search for it, you're like, where's this field? I know I have this field. It might it might be hidden. It's not actually showing up in the property. So. Yeah, be real aware of that. Um, just hit hit your manage right here. There's a little, little let me click off here. Big fields. Um, if you click this little manage button at the end of each at the beginning of each section, or you can come here, hit manage fields. It's going to open up this, and then you can say, um, you know, like, oh, I can't find this, or this field wasn't in there. Oh, let me check it on. Anyway, that's there. Now, what I was saying though is if you're like clicked out somewhere else uh, into the browser, and then I went and hit Control F, but you know the find comes up. But if I click in the program, and I don't think we have a Control or a Command F in the program, I think we took it out because of the find and it's so popular. But basically, you just if you if for some reason the Windows or the Mac stuff is popping up, click just in here in a white spot, and then do it again, and it'll pop up the correct way. All right. Um, let's see. Tasks. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. See this thing shaking at me? That means that this is pared down to just one of my templates. So <clears throat> if you want to just view one of the templates, you can. You can click on this and just see the tasks for the appraisal tasks or the septic tasks, whatever ones were brought in during that intake process. If I want to see all of them, I can just click on all tasks. So if you're not seeing what you what you want to see, and that's why he um, the developer made this little thing shake at you, so it kind of catches your eye and lets you know, like, hey, you're not seeing everything here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I would just really familiarize yourself with all these, like schedule. Some people are like, why are my things like all out of order? Well, you probably have this set for user sorted instead of scheduled and unscheduled. Um, here we'll open them up so you can see what's happening inside. Uh, but you can keep them condensed as well. Uh, here's your deleted and completed and options and things like that. So if I wanted to delete out just one of my task templates, I can do that here. If I want to delete out all the tasks, be real careful with this because if you delete it out and bring that section back in, or if you delete one of these out and bring it back in, it's not going to remember which ones you've checked off before. Okay, so you're going to have to just make sure that you're familiar with what you're doing here. All right, we got a question. Let's see what it says here. Um, Fields, templates, and defaults and settings can be automatically applied if you set up property templates, correct? Um, yeah, kind of. So yes is the yes is the answer, but let me just talk through this a little bit. So Michelle's talking about property templates. Now, I don't use property templates that much. The people that typically use property templates are going to be people that are doing manual transactions and people that are using the API to bring in, I think, Michelle, you are, I think you're bringing in like interface uh, um, field or uh, sorry, intake forms from Interface, which is one of our partners that handles some stuff through Follow Up Boss to make it easier on agents. They can fill out a form right in Follow Up Boss, bring in that data, and it comes in through the API, fills out the fields. And instead of having our intake forms trigger everything, what they do is they create a, um, let's see here, they create a trigger template here. And basically it would be the same as an intake form. It would say, if HOA is yes, do this, this. If HOA is yes, do this, this. If septic is yes, do this, this. And so, um, yeah, so Michelle's using that and that's why she's asking about um, property templates. So how it works through the API is we don't have it like, if this field is X then bring in this template. What we have is bring in this property template. And what a property template is, is a group of templates, okay? So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I had to insert all of those, I would have to go to the task and I would have to say, insert, apply template, apply template, apply template, apply template. Then I'd have to go to my documents, apply template, apply template, go to my fields, apply template. So you can see how that's tedious and we don't wanna to have to do that much manual work. So what, what we do is we put all of these in one template that are grouped together, that makes sense together. And then all we have to do is come to the buyer transaction property template. When we apply this one template, all however many of these come in at one time. And so why that's important for people that are using the API, which is a great, which is a great option, is now you can actually have one template in here or you can have two templates in here. And then what you can do 
is when that outside form is coming in from Jot form or Woo form or wherever you're bringing them in for, the API can say, hey, they said yes to HOA. So now I'm going to bring in my HOA property template that may have my HOA tasks, my HOA fields, my HOA whatever, and bring all of those in at one time. Okay. So that's why property templates are uh, a cool option. So the order of that is field, document, task, and date, correct? Where do your triggers go in that order? Yeah. So um, just in general, uh, let me go back over to an intake form and show you because that's a really good point, Michelle. Um, <clears throat> and Michelle's been in, our, in and around our system for quite a while. She's doing, I think you were off and on and off and on, but um, you're definitely asking the right questions now. So you're really, I, I think you're really understanding what's going on here. So, um, okay, let me get into intake form and go to buyer. Okay, so when you start up here, um, you want to start with your fields, right? And the reason you want to start with your fields, oh, excuse me, sorry, I'm just getting back from surgery and I have a cough, so I apologize. Um, so fields start, and then why we want fields to be the starting thing here is because if you're bringing in more fields, those fields may trigger other things below. What I don't want to do is bring in a, have a template saying, if this field is X, bring in this template. Well, maybe that field wasn't added yet. So if that field's not in there, it can't trigger this. And if it goes this first and goes down to fields later, it's never going to trigger that template. So what we want to do is come up here and let me, let me open these up and make more sense. If this field, um, if this field right here, seller disclosure required is equal to yes, bring in these other fields. Well, this field right here may also have a trigger down here. And that may also trigger a template to come in. So we want all of our fields to come in first. And then um, from there, I mean, it really, the document and task thing can be interchangeable. Um, I, I don't, and the team can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's anything that comes up with documents and tasks that need like a certain order. You can lump those in together. Um, and then date is always last. Yeah, date is always last. And I just do that. You don't have to necessarily do that if you think through the process, but I do it just so I don't have to think. Um, I want all my fields. I want all my templates. I want everything to come in. And then I do my dates at the end um, just so that I know everything is there and ready to go for those dates so that they calculate in the correct way. So yeah, so if you're, if you're gonna have a order, I would say fields, tasks and documents interchangeably, and then date, okay? Oh, and if you have triggers, you can throw triggers in around the same time you throw tasks. So if you have trigger templates, throw those in around the tasks. That's, um, I would probably do those. I'm trying to think if there's anything. Uh, I can't think of anything out of the ordinary on those that you wouldn't be able to interchange those with tasks as well. Yeah, great question, Michelle. Great, great question. All right, so I mentioned earlier uh, while we're waiting for more questions. Oh yeah, we can dive into triggers. Give me one second. I'm just gonna, um, the one thing that people miss a lot uh, and I went over this last week too, but this organization and user, or no, that's not, I'm just reading off the screen. I'm not even thinking here. Okay, global settings. <clears throat> in the little gear icon, global settings, get familiar with these. These do a lot of cool things in here um, that you may not even know are here. So like if you want to rename your file when you apply a file role, or if you want a one sheet to remove the empty fields, or if you want the agents to have access to all of these triggers in their agent portal, or I'm sorry, not triggers, filters in their agent portal. Um, you can do that. So a lot of cool stuff in here. Just familiarize yourself with the settings and also with, um, with some of this stuff as well. Idea Lab, Support Center, Keyboard Shortcuts, the change log. I mean, our team does a great job with this change log and letting you know what has changed. So if you're a follow-up boss user, here's a deal sync and user dropdown that changed. You might want to know this. So pay attention to those change logs as well. All right, uh, Michelle is asking about triggers. It's a major challenge right now. Yeah, so triggers is an interesting one. Let me, um, hey guys, do you have a property where you actually have triggers in that you know? Do you know? Anyone, anyone, Bueller, Bueller? Yeah, I'm in your boat. I'm not familiar with this account, but. I don't uh, think I have any triggers on any properties. Um, you can put on on any of them though. This one might have, well, no, I don't think it does. Um, 
We do have a couple of different templates in here, but I'm not sure how much they're built out. All right, that's fine. I'll just apply yeah. them all and that way yeah. I have a couple to work with. All right. Sorry guys, this is my first time working in this account, so I'm just not familiar with everything in here. Okay, cool. So triggers. Um, so the main thing that we want to talk about on triggers is what, well, first of all, what is a trigger, right? A trigger is something that's going to be conditionally initiated. So instead of having to go to a task list every single day and look through your 30 pending properties, look through the tasks on every single property to see what needs done, we're going to try to get rid of that, right? Or at least a lot of it. So we're going to come into a, a property and take a task and turn that into one or multiple triggers. Okay. So this is a trigger. If something is true, and this could be five different conditions, this could be and or conditions, there could be a lot of different things in here. But in this simple example, there's one condition. If contract type is equal to buyer, I want to immediately send this intro email to the buyers, right? So now I don't have a task that says send opening emails. And then I have seven different emails I may or may not have to send. Maybe you have to delete some, maybe you don't, whatever. You're trying to figure all that stuff out through task. You just go over to your tasks. This has one trigger on it. So when I check this off, you're doing something. So let's see what that something is. I'm sending an email. Okay. So instead of having to come here, check off this task, go to my health bar, check the email, do all that. Forget that. Just take this trigger and turn it into a, auto, or a property trigger. Okay, so instead of having this task here, I just delete this task and then I would come over to triggers and I would put that email in here and then I would set my conditions. When do I send that? I send it when, you know, this field equals X, this other field equals Y, and I have this contact and this document exists. Okay, so you can create as many of these conditions as you want based on fields, contacts and documents. So once you get that set up, you just have to think in your brain, like, when do I do this manually, right? Well, I do it if this field is changed to this option and if there's a lender on the property. Okay, well, those are your two conditions now. So think when I would do it. Think of the one to 10 things that you have to have true before you send this email and then turn those into conditions. And now the system's gonna constantly be looking at these conditions for you. And as soon as these conditions are all met, what it's going to do is it's going to push it into ready to go. So really where I should have been is um, uh, in process. So in process are the ones that aren't ready to go yet for whatever reason, okay? These fields don't even exist in here. There's no HOA. So it's just kind of killing this whole trigger right here. Um, this one, HOA fields are not there. And I don't know what's going on with this one. There's just no condition, so whatever. So these ones are in process. They're waiting. So let's pretend that these fields, let's pretend that I add um, HOA status is equal to waiting on documents. Okay, so here, HOA status. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, I would actually check out the listeners and see if we built out a fields listener for it. I wonder if we did. Okay, well, let me let me do this real quick because uh, okay. HOA status is equal to waiting on HOA docs. So HOA status is. Uh, waiting on HOA docs, okay, and then the field HOA docs receive date is blank. Okay, so that's blank. Let's leave it blank. Okay, let's refresh the screen because we changed fields and didn't refresh. So, oh, there you go. So it just popped up. You saw that. Um, there were three here before, and now because all of those are true, this HOA, um, so this is an and or condition. So this one's true, this one's not, but it doesn't matter because it's an or, so now it popped over to ready to go. Now, this is going to wait until one day after contract acceptance at 9 a.m. We're already past that, so it went ahead and threw it into ready to go. If this date wasn't here yet, it would actually throw it into the scheduled, and it would just be waiting for this date to become true, okay? Um, so anyway, that's, that's kind of the, that's the baseline of how triggers work. We're basically taking a task, and we're turning it into something that you want to happen more automatically than normal. Now, in the future, we will add and send automatically button on here, okay? Um, right now, we don't have it just because there's too many things to work through liability-wise. We're trying to figure out, like, who's going to abuse it, who's not. Like, how are we going to put some checks and balances in the right place so that you don't accidentally change a field to yes and then be like, oh, I meant no. Well, too late. That email just flew out of the system. So 
putting some barriers on this stuff so that you guys don't hurt yourselves in the um, TC process and don't hurt your client loyalty and things like that. So um, what are the best practices? Should we set the triggers up in the tasks or in the task templates? Well, the task templates, definitely. But then, <clears throat> um, but I would totally try to get rid of my, ta or my tasks eventually. Like that's the goal is you don't want to have to go to a task list every day and look at it. What I want to do is the system to tell me when it's ready to do something. So <clears throat> if you set your conditions correctly, right? If you set these conditions correctly, it's going to trigger this email to your health bar. And then you can watch these health bars turn red and then you'll know that there's things to do. So when these say ready to go, you hit this. These emails are up here, they're ready to go. I'm gonna inspect it. And I'm gonna say, yep, all that looks good. All that looks good. I got no red here. If, if there's things missing, you're gonna have a big red box here. And I can say, go ahead and it attached the right you know, document, go ahead and send. If I need to edit some fields, I could do that. If I needed to edit it and just put in an extra line in there because it's the guy's birthday or there's just something else pressing that came up that I wanna to add to this email, you can hit edit and go ahead and do that. Um, let me try to find one that has some missing fields. If let's see, um, the intro email might be a good one. Yeah, this one, I think. Oh no, everything. Nope, this one's all good too. <laughs> but see here, this is why you test it, right? Because look at this. Um, there's a big gap in here, and this shouldn't be here. So there's something wrong with our smart blocks that we need to take a look at, and we probably have an extra space in one of our smart blocks that we didn't mean to have. The other thing is this line is right up on this line. This would drive me crazy if I was a TC. So I would want a space in between the end of my smart blocks and this line. So this is why it's really important to go ahead and apply these templates and see what they look like and say, I don't like the way this looks. Um, this should be down on its own line. This should be, and just remember this is a demo account, but um, this should not be here. We should have the extra line here. Those are the things you wanna work out before you make these things go live, okay? Um, I didn't see any, oops, sorry. Uh, stay. Um, you can definitely go to the field sections and change some of the answers and that might, it's this, okay. this, this property is definitely a lot more full <laughs> than the other ones that we have. Well, this is the way your account should look. So if you're not having that red, that's the way it should look. Now, if you are missing a merge field, like you forgot to put in the address or you forgot to put in something, it will have a big red box here and tell you what's missing. So I just kind of wanted to point that out, but that's fine. You guys have done a good job with this test account. Um, okay, let me see here. What are best practices? I don't mean in each property. I should have asked in task templates or trigger templates. Um, trigger templates definitely so like it's a little different in the it's a little different in the um strategy here right in task templates we want to make these task templates as small as possible we want to make them like hoa tasks septic tasks um, well tasks so you're only bringing in the task financing tasks so you're only bringing in the tasks that you need now with triggers it's a little different now we still have the hoa triggers we still have septic triggers things like that that are very standalone but there's also going to be more in your base template than in a task template. Um, and that's just because you don't know what's going to happen, right? You don't know if the buyer is going to change and say, yeah, I want a home warranty. Well, if that's the case, I don't want, I mean, you could have the home warranty field trigger that um, trigger template to come in, or you could just have home warranty and some common things that may change during the transaction in your base template. So you don't have to even worry about that. So that's the one thing I would bring up is, it's going to be a, a touch different strategy between the task templates and how many tasks are in there versus the trigger templates and how many trigger templates live in each template. You don't have to break down triggers as much because they're sitting in here. I'm sorry. They're sitting in the in process. You may have 50 of them in in process and the system's just basically listening to these conditions and saying, are all of them true yet? Are all of them true yet? And as soon as they are, it pushes it over to ready to go and alerts you through the health bar that, hey, this email needs to go out. Now, I think what Michelle's saying is like, um, I forget what her first question was actually. Let me go back to the answer questions real quick and just make sure that I'm answering the right thing here. Um, should we set up triggers in, oh, okay. She was saying, should I set up triggers in the task templates or the trigger templates? I would always default to trigger templates unless there's a reason to have a task. 
So if I can make a task a trigger, I'm going to think every possible way I possibly can because I don't want to have to go to a task list every day. So if a task can be a trigger, make it a trigger or make it five triggers, right? Because opening emails may be one, two, three, maybe seven different triggers that you have to create for that one. But it's going to be awesome in the future because it's going to know that it's not seller financing and not to send this information. Or it's going to know that there's no lender on this file and we don't need anything to go to a lender. There's no attorney on this file. We don't need it to go to whatever the case may be. Triggers are smart enough to know what to send and what not to send. So always default to trigger um, if you can. Now, let me make a caveat for all you new people on the call. Um, do not go to triggers unless you're ready for triggers. Like I'm just talking to Michelle specifically because she's on triggers. She already has it set up. Um, triggers isn't something you need to play with without having a good plan in place first. Um, you definitely want to start with tasks when you come on the program, get used to the program, and then you can slowly start making this task into a trigger, this task into a trigger. Plus you have to be on our top tier plan to do it. So a lot of you aren't even on that top tier plan. Um, okay. How do you troubleshoot spacing in a smart block? I have a few issues like that. Um, yeah. So here's the way to do it. You come to emails, right? And you find an email that you have smart blocks in, and then you just apply and make sure your fields are right to trigger what you want, right? If you want it to come in, make sure the field is correct so that that smart block is actually going to come in. And then let's just say, I'm going to apply this template and then it comes in. And then you can look at this and say, oh, I have an extra space. Let's just pretend there's an extra space in between something. Well, then you can come over here and hit, um, I'm sorry. I'm so used to hitting command now. Okay, control S. Control S is gonna pull up your smart blocks in a side window. And then I can come in here and say, okay. And click in here too, click in here because you can see where this cursor is. Sometimes you come in here and the cursor's down here and you wonder why you have all these spaces in here. Well, if my cursor's here, it just saved this with these spaces in. Now, sometimes you have to put the BR for it to work right, but this could screw up things. So just pay attention to little details like this that you want your cursor to be tight up against what you've done. Um, punctuation is another one. Um, there's some where you're inserting a smart block into an existing sentence. Well, if you're inserting it into an existing sentence, you don't want punctuation at the end. You want this to come in and the punctuation from the sentence be the punctuation that's there. So let me change this back before I screw up someone's stuff. But you, you want to think through these things and look for all your spaces. Now, if you're having trouble with the spacing, you're going to have to look at the initial email template and see what spacing is in there. And then you're going to come to the smart block and see what spacing is in there. And now if this is the last one, and I always want to space in here, you can always come in here and uh, let's see here. Whoops. You can always come in here and uh, make a, like a, a space at some point, like a space right here if you wanted to. So um, if you have anything specific, Todd, I can look at it or you can send it, send it into support if you just can't figure it out and we can take a look, but it's kind of like, you just got to be a detective, right? Come to your emails, <clears throat> come to a fake transaction, create a fake transaction. Um, come to your email tab, fill out the fields the way you would want them, and then start applying templates and then change the field to the opposite. So it doesn't come in and look how it looks and then change it, the field to, so it does come in and look how it looks and make sure the spacing is right, whether that smart block comes in or whether it doesn't come in. If you have five smart blocks in a row, you want to test it where all five of those smart blocks come in, two of them come in, four of them come in. And just check that spacing and make sure it's going to look right to your client before you're live in a transaction and then you're scrambling and it's it always happens when you're the busiest and you're going to want to shoot yourself because you're like so busy and then all of a sudden this doesn't look right and you got to edit and then you got to remember to go back and edit it later and and so every time you do a smart block you should be testing these a little bit before they go out and just making sure that this email screen looks the way you want it to look okay all right if you have a pool trigger that removes the pool inspection, if no, will it remove the pool inspection from the home inspection email? Well, it depends on how you have it set up, Michelle. Um, if there's a smart block in your pool inspection email, or I'm sorry, if there's a smart block in your home inspection email with a pool clause in there, and you have it set up to say, if, um, 
pool inspections, yes, put this smart block in, then yes, it will work. But if you only have the trigger um, that removes the pool inspection, uh, it still may put in the smart block. It just depends on how your fields are. You just got to check your fields, check your field values and check your smart blocks and make sure those are in your home inspection. So in my home inspection email, you know, there may be radon, there may be pool, there may, all of those are separate smart blocks, okay? And we'll even go further and put all of those into a smart block group, which I'm not gonna get into now. It's a little bit more advanced. You can watch videos on it if you want. But in the smart block group, I can house all of those smart blocks. So if I need to put that in one, in more than one email, I don't have to go to 15 different template emails and add in all those inspections. I can just put a block of um, smart blocks in that email in one shot in that group. It groups them all. And then I have a field that says, are there any inspections on this property? If that's yes, it triggers that block to come in. But then each of those smart blocks inside of it, pool inspection has its own condition. Is there a pool inspection? Yes or no. Is there a radon inspection? Yes or no. Is there a pest inspection? Yes or no. And so all of those live inside of a group so that's easy to um, put in and take out. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it just depends. The, so what she just asked, yes, I meant, would it remove the pool inspection smart block? If you have a pool inspection smart block in there, all it's gonna do is look at your fields. And if your field doesn't exist or if your field isn't correct for that condition, it won't come in. So just look at that individually. All right, we're out of questions. Uh, what do we got? 18 minutes. Um, give me another three, four minutes to go ahead and pop more questions in. If not, we'll go ahead and end early. Anything else you're struggling with? Anything else? Um, anything, really. Just pop them in there while you got us. And definitely consider those group classes. So if you guys want specific information about um, under our learn tab under webinars if you want specific information about fields or emails or contacts or tasks or whatever um, definitely sign up for these and you're going to get a full hour i think yeah full hour of detailed information on these things and you can ask all your specific questions to these um, topics as well yeah this afternoon we're going to be going over tasks and triggers so you're just going to look for that afternoon class Tasks and Triggers 101. Uh, afternoon, okay. Oh, scroll up a little bit. Right here. Yep, that's the one. So one, two, three, four, five. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, one down. So if you go to that webinars tab, you want to attend the one later, go to the sixth uh, one down. Um, Todd, just learned about the classes yesterday. I will be living with Hannah for the next several weeks. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's a great place to start because you're getting detailed information. You're able to ask those questions that are detailed on one part of the program that you're working on. So um, I love it. I love how uh, I love how geared they are towards little pieces of the program that you can learn really well. Yep, Michelle says she's amazing. I appreciate that. She is amazing. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, we got no questions. Uh, I will give you another two minutes. Two minutes or forever hold your peace. Um, thank you for being here. Always appreciate you guys being here. I I mean, I think it helps a ton, but I could be wrong, but people keep showing up. So I'm assuming this is helping. Um, we wanna be here for you in many different ways. So the group style setting, we wanna be here open Q&A setting. Uh, we're gonna have some cool stuff coming in the future. Our product team and our onboarding team is always creating just great ideas of things to help with community and making our Facebook page better. and just all these things you're going to see over the next 12 months, some big changes. And uh, hopefully it will be for the better for all of you getting your system set up in a way that is going to change your life. So, all right, we'll go ahead and end it. Thanks again for being here. We will see you same time, same place next week. Have a great day.